Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today, I'm gonna to be comparing the Dell S2722 DGM versus the Scepter C275B-QWD168. I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons of each and then figure out which one you guys should get. And if at any point during the video, if you wanna check out either of these monitors, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. I do got you guys, but let's jump into it. All right, so going over some of the basic stats, these are both 27 inch 1440p monitors with a PPI or pixels per inch of about 108 or 109. This means most games and text is gonna be clear and crisp. That's just the PPI at this resolution. 1440p or 2K at 27 inches is a good resolution. Now again, these are both curved monitors. They're curved VA panels or vertical alignment panels. So they're very, very, very similar monitors. So let's dive deeper into both of these monitors, which are actually both behind me, and let's figure out which one is best for you. All right, now the refresh rate on these is the same at 165 Hertz. They both have FreeSync Premium and screen tearing on both of these are not really an issue. I've gamed on both of these extensively. Never did I really see a lot of screen tearing going on. So that's a good thing. Screen tearing is just not an issue. Now this is where the Dell starts to pull ahead a little bit is input lag. Now the input lag on the Dell is seriously good. It is extremely low at only four milliseconds of input lag. That's really, really good. Now the Scepter isn't terrible, but it's just not that four milliseconds of the Dell. This will make a noticeable difference. However, either of them are not really gonna be a problem, but if you really need, if you really want a faster input lag, four milliseconds is quite good, especially if you're really into Warzone and you really want that low input lag. That's just something luxurious that most monitors are not gonna have that low of an input lag, but the Dell gives that to you. So that may influence your buying decision. All right, now moving into brightness, this is an area that the Scepter actually pulls ahead in. Now the Dell is advertised as 350 nits, although it's a little bit higher than that actually, and it's closer to 400 nits, but the Scepter is 440 nits. It is quite bright it's very nice and luxurious to have that bright of a screen. So that's definitely an area that it pulls ahead. So if you spend a majority of your time in a bright room, neither of these are really gonna have that big of an issue with reflections just because they both have a matte display and they're both very bright monitors. The Scepter is just really bright. That definitely bumps it up a little bit for the Scepter. This is nicer for watching content, especially in the daytime, especially in the daytime. When you're watching content, YouTube, playing video games, that's gonna make a difference really in the daytime. At night, you're really not gonna notice that much of a difference unless you have them side by side. But I used only the Scepter and then I moved in to the Dell and use that by itself. And then for the past couple of days, I've been using both of them side by side. And you definitely notice it when they're side by side, but when you're using one and then the other, it's not really that big of a change, but side by side, it's massive. All right, now let's talk colors. This is also where the Scepter pulls ahead a little bit. They both hit 99% of the sRGB color space. However, the Scepter actually outputs a higher bit rate at 10 bits, so that's much better. The Dell cannot output 10 bits, it can only output eight bits of color. They didn't use frame rate control on the Dell, which I think was, I don't know, I really wish that it did. So if you are gonna be doing something like YouTube videos or photo editing, Obviously, neither of these panels are the most amazing for it, but they're a lot better than what we'd seen a couple years ago. You could definitely do some light photo editing and some editing YouTube videos easily on both of these, but the Scepter definitely wins with color because it is able to output 10 bits of color. All right, now moving into contrast ratio, how deep those blacks are gonna be. The Dell hits 3,000 to one and the Scepter hits 4,000 to one. So a little bit better on the Scepter, but it also has a higher brightness. All right, but let's move on to response time and ghosting. This is a huge place place where the Dell pulls ahead way over the Scepter. Now the Dell has a two millisecond gray to gray response time, which is really good, really good for a VA panel, while the Scepter only has a one millisecond MPRT or motion picture response time, a gray to gray rating is much better and faster than an MPRT because MPRT is usually just the manufacturer's basically way of testing it. It will always be one millisecond uh, because the way it's testing, it's, it's, it's really just an advertising stat. So I'm not sure exactly what the grade of grade response time is on the Scepter, but it's definitely not two milliseconds. So how does that equate to ghosting? Well, both of these obviously have ghosting. They're VA panels. Every single VA panel is gonna have some sort of ghosting. The Scepter is not terrible. I've definitely seen worse, but it does have noticeable ghosting. And changing the response time settings definitely makes a difference, but it's not a massive difference. Whereas on the Dell, it has almost the exact same amount of ghosting, 
but as you change the response time settings, it decreases it a lot. And that just is because of that two millisecond gray to gray response time. So on the Dell, there's fast, super fast, and then extreme. And extreme, the fastest one, doesn't cause any pixel overshooting or inverse ghosting, and it does achieve that two millisecond gray to gray response time. And the ghosting is not bad at all, especially for a VA panel at that setting. If you're seeing a trend here, the low input lag and the less ghosting on the Dell makes it the better monitor if you are into really fast paced gaming like Warzone. Whereas if you want a prettier image with 10 bit color and a higher brightness, the Scepter is just gonna be a prettier panel. All right, now following suit, the menu system on both of these. So the Dell has a pretty menu system. It is faster to do things because it uses a toggle switch. It has a dedicated on and off button and then four other buttons that are supposed to be quicker, but they're really not. But it has that joystick to navigate everything and it just is a cleaner menu system. The Scepter one kind of looks like it's from like 2011 and the controls, although much better than their previous monitors, is still kind of not the best. It just doesn't look pretty and it's kind of harder to do things and it's not as intuitive. Although neither of them are super hard to learn at this point. All right, but stand and build quality. The Scepter has height adjustability, tilt and swivel, whereas the Dell only has height adjustability and tilt. Now, I don't really ever care about swivel that much, so that's not really a pro or a con, but it might be for you. Both of the stands and monitors are built really well. Overall, the Dell is just a prettier design, in my opinion, although the Scepter is pretty cool. The Scepter is a little bit more minimalistic and has much more exposed metal, whereas the Dell has a lot of metal on it, but all the exposed parts are plastic, so it's metal with plastic covering it. Now, personally, I prefer the Dell's design and because you can cable manage it much easier. Because the stand's a little bit thicker, it's easier to hide cables without using anything basically besides just plugging them in. Whereas the Scepter is quite hard to hide those cables. So if you're not gonna use something like a monitor arm, it will be easier to hide the cables with the Dell. All right, moving into basic compatibility, the Dell uses a 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter vase amount, and the Scepter actually doesn't have the vase amount it actually comes with a bracket that then connects to where you would connect your stand to. So you have to take your stand off and then put the bracket on there and it's only a 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter base amount. Now that's not really a problem, but it's just a little bit weird. And so obviously the Dell just wins a little bit by that, but they're both able to be base mounted pretty easily. All right, now the Scepter has two things that the Dell does not, and then we're gonna go over the ports. The Scepter has built in speakers, which is really cool. They don't really sound that great at all, but it's nice that they're there. It also has built in RGB on the back, which does shine against the wall just a little bit. This would obviously be dependent on how close it is to the wall, but really it's just kind of a gimmick and it doesn't really change anything. All right, but talking about ports, the Dell has two HDMI 2.0s, one display port 1.2 and a three and a half millimeter audio out. Whereas the Scepter has two HDMI 2.0s, two display port 1.4s and a three and a half millimeter audio out. So obviously the Scepter wins with that, but I don't think most of you will have a problem with either one. But all right, but the last thing is price. The Scepter is $330 and the Dell is $340. So they are extremely similarly priced. They have a lot of similar stats. Which one should you you guys buy. Well, I absolutely love both of these monitors and I highly recommend both of them, but well, there is no clear one winner here. They are both really awesome monitors and I absolutely love both of them. But if you're way more into fast paced gaming and you really want speed over everything, as well as still having good brightness and a good contrast ratio and good colors, then I would definitely go with the Dell. But if you want a high refresh rate gaming monitor, that's gonna be a really, really pretty picture gonna be bright, it's gonna have good colors, 10-bit color, then I would definitely go with the Scepter. So yeah, again, if you wanna check out either of these monitors, Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. I do got you guys, but I absolutely love both of them. I think I prefer probably, that's so hard to say. If I was gonna play Warzone, I would probably wanna use the Dell, but for everyday use, if I had to pick one monitor, I would probably pick the Scepter, even though I recommend the Dell a little bit more for fast paced gaming. So it's super hard to say. So yeah, it's super hard to pick between these because they're both very similarly priced and specced out. But yeah, both great monitors. As you can see behind me, they look very similar on video, although the Scepter definitely has a higher brightness and that's very noticeable. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out, help me out and throw a like below. And if you enjoy monitor reviews, monitor comparisons, I do a ton of those on Type-C Tech Reviews so please consider subscribing below. But this was Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.